Hi, welcome to Erica's Little Welsh Garden. Today I'm going to show you five perennial fruit and veg that I've got growing in my garden and you can grow too. And if this is the first time you're watching my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you can be notified of all of my latest videos. Number one is Jerusalem artichokes. These are such an amazing hardy perennial veg to grow in your garden. Now I would suggest growing these in a pot because if you have any little bit of the Jerusalem artichoke left behind that will sprout a new plant and you can suddenly become overrun so I grow mine in a pot and it's so easy all you need to do is just when you're harvesting them leave a couple behind it's probably best to leave your nicest ones behind so that hopefully you will continue to produce nice ones but all you need to do is pretty much just leave a couple of those behind in the pot fill it up with soil and then when the temperature is right they will sprout. Now they cut up to about six foot in height and will sometimes flower a really nice yellow flower very similar to the sunflower so I would definitely suggest giving those a go this year. And number two is rhubarb. Now the earliest records of rhubarb go back to 2700 BC in China where it was originally used for medicines. Now it's such a versatile hardy perennial vegetable to grow in your garden or your allotment. All you need to do is get a crown at the beginning of the year. It can be grown from seed but it takes a lot longer to you to be able to harvest that. But what you need to do is you get a crown which is part of the roots and plant that early in the year and unfortunately it's really not a good idea to actually harvest that in the first year because it sends out these lovely big stalks with lovely green big um, leaves on there and those leaves are its food factory and it's really important that you let as many of those leaves kind of make as much energy for that plant and put that into the roots so that it can be really strong and healthy so yeah in the first year really not a good idea to harvest it but wait a couple of years and you should have a really lovely rhubarb plant that's producing lots of lovely stalks for you to eat and number three is yakon. Now I grew these for the first time last year and I was so impressed. They're related to the Jerusalem artichoke and they originate from Peru. Now these are the um, tubers that the plant creates as its food storage but unlike the Jerusalem artichokes you can't actually um, propagate from these so you can eat all of these and then what you need to do is dig up the actual rhizomes and store them in a frost free environment over winter I did a video when I actually harvested these and I'll put a link above if you're interested in growing these next year but I definitely say it's really worth a go a lot of people make syrups from this and I was quite interested in having a go at making some wine from them but this is actually the last one because we ate them all and we roasted them actually so they are very versatile and really worth having a go next year and number four are strawberries unfortunately I don't have a lovely strawberry patch to show you so I'm showing you a strawberry in a pot instead now these propagate either by saving the seeds from the fruit or you can propagate them by letting the runners from the mother plants take. So during the summer, the mother plant will send out lots of feelers with little roots on the end. And as soon as they hit the soil, they will start a new plant. But you don't want your mother plants to do that in their first, second or third year because you want them to spend all of their energy making lots of strawberries for you. After about three years, they still produce strawberries, but they're smaller and, you know, there's quite a lot less of them. So what you need to do is in the third year, you let as many of the runners come out as possible and let them root. So they will be your new mother plants for the next three years. And every 10 years, you need to completely get rid of all of your strawberry plants and move the location of your strawberry bed in your garden or your allotment. The reason for that is you can get a build up over 10 years of lots of pests and diseases and you don't want that at all. So what you need to do is just compost all of the strawberries and then start again with some fresh bought in ones in a new location. Give it a go next year because these are lush and they're also really expensive in the supermarkets. And last but not least, we've got ochre. Now, ochre originates from the Andes and it is a lovely little tuber. You've got pink ones, you've got 
um, lovely creamy kind of white ones and you've got a mix between which is an orange and pink one here and I'm so excited to be growing these. Now because it originates from the Andes it's not a frost hardy vegetable at all so you need to make sure that you do harvest them at the end of the first frost. Now if you've been growing them for a few years all you need to do is leave a few tubers behind and mulch over the top and that should keep them going year after year but because I've only got a couple of tubers and it's my first year I'm going to start these off in some pots indoors and then plant them outside once all risk of frost is gone. I really hope that I've inspired you to grow some more perennial fruit and veg in your garden this year but if you're still looking for more inspiration then head over to Liz Zorab's channel where she has also done a five easy perennial veg you can grow this year and if you have enjoyed watching today don't forget to hit that thumbs up button and if you're new to my channel don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you can be notified of all of my latest videos thanks very much for watching take care bye